So I've just been sitting at home trying to think of ideas to do for you guys. I do have a lot of gear reviews to do still, but I want to do something different. So I'm sitting in my van not far from my house. There's a stream nearby and we're going to go out and take some photos of it. If you guys remember back in the day when Sony brought out the A7 Mark II and the A7R II, I believe, and probably some other cameras as well, they originally came with an app store, kind of. It was based on Android, but it wasn't like Google Play Store or anything. But it had a app included in the camera that allowed you to do long exposure photography without any filters or anything. So it's not really long exposure, but it's the same effect. Now, basically, all it would do is take multiple frames of the exact same photo and then somehow in camera, I don't know how it managed to do it with the power that the cameras had, but managed to use a median filter of some sort and output a raw file onto the SD card. So you could then go and edit it later in Lightroom. Now the gear I'm using today is just my Sony A9 Mark II and I'm going to be using the 24mm G Master which I'm filming on now and I'm using the 55mm 1.8 we might get some a shot with that as well uh, but we're not using any other filters or anything just the camera lens and a tripod and all the rest of it is going to be done in Photoshop after and we'll run through that process as well. So with that being said let's head outside and get the frames that we need to create this image. Oh, this looks dodgy. So during the day, you're obviously going to need an ND filter to be doing any kind of long exposures. And in this case, we're going to open the lens wide out to f1.4 and focus on a certain spot just to make a point of the fact that uh, you don't need any kind of slow shutter or anything for this experiment. So it's not your typical landscape photo, but I'll show you what we've got set up. So here's the frame we've got. Uh, and I focus just here, so my settings are f1.4, 1 one twenty-fifth of a second, ISO 100. Uh, so, you know, it's not a long exposure, but we're going to take a whole bunch of shots, and hopefully you guys will be able to see what I'm talking about. So obviously most cameras don't come with an interval timing feature or anything like that, so you're going to need to use a trigger, or just really carefully hold your finger down on the, sh on the shutter button, and burst off a bunch of photos. For this example, I'm going to take 30 images, and that's 30 images of the exact same frame, same setting, same everything. So as I said, we're going to use the interval timing feature here, and I've got it set up so that it's going to start in 3 seconds, and it's going to take a photo every second for 30 shots. So there we have it. Um, if we look back you'll be able to see all the exposures here. All right, so we're back here in the van. I've got the laptop set up and we've got the images on my A9 here. So let's import them into Lightroom and do our thing. Now you can do this in a few different orders, but I'll show you what we're gonna do to kind of speed up the process as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, import these files into Lightroom. Um, we should have, there we go, 30 images and one video. Let's get rid of that. All right, so now we've got all these images imported into Lightroom, as you can see. The frame hasn't changed at all. The only thing that's changed is anything that moved in the frame. So it's important to remember when you're taking these images that anything that's moving in the frame, whether that's branches, trees, people, cars, anything that's moving is gonna be blurred out with this technique. And as I was talking about before when we were taking the photos, I shot these all at 1.4 wide open. So shutter speed was at 1 25th of a second, which you can see here in the corner. Now to make this process a little bit faster, especially if you have an older computer we're going to process all of these in Lightroom with the colors we want and all the effects uh, well most of them anyway and then we're going to export the JPEGs into Photoshop and process the JPEGs rather than trying to stack 30 raw files on top of each other uh, you can do it either way it totally depends on what you want to do but for this purpose this is what I'm going to show you guys so as I said, we've got them all here in Lightroom and I'm just gonna process one of them and then we're gonna sync it across the board uh, so you guys can see how that looks. So I'm just gonna use my preset here. Uh, you guys can see the link in the description for those if you want. We've got a bit of chromatic aberration here at wide open with this 1.4. So let's go ahead and fix that up. We'll do it manually. And that's pretty much gone, so that's good. Um, otherwise, it's looking pretty good, maybe warm it up a touch. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I'm not gonna do much else to it. Maybe add a little bit more contrast. Yeah, that's a bit better. 
Sweet. So that's pretty much done. Um, we've done all the effects we need to do. So now I'm going to press Command A or Control A, I think, if you're on PC, and then Shift Command S to sync all the adjustments we've done. So make sure any adjustments you've made, including lens corrections and uh, any color corrections or anything like that, is selected and then we're going to synchronize all those photos so now we've got all these photos edited and synced together so they all uh, match identically uh, from here you can either import all of them as raw files in separate layers into photoshop or you can do what i was talking about earlier and we're going to export them all as jpegs onto the desktop and bring them into photoshop after that instead of bringing the raw files in while we're waiting for these files to export, I'll just let you guys know if you check in the description there'll be a link with a Dropbox folder where you can download these 30 images for yourself and have a play with them if you just want to try it out without going out into the field. So now we have all those files exported onto a desktop. We're going to go into Photoshop, go File, Automate and Photo Merge. Once we're in this window here, I'm just going to click Reposition to stack them on top of each other and then find our files so long exposure and here's all our jpegs so command a to select all and they're all in there now we don't want them to be blended together at the moment all we're doing is having them reposition on top of each other so uh, it's going to line the photos up if there was any movement in there uh, like i was saying if you're going to hold down the shutter button you may get a little bit of camera shake and that's going to ruin the entire image if one of them is off so we're going to reposition the images and then create a smart object so now Photoshop's going to go ahead and align all the selected layers as it says there on the screen. Uh, it might take a little bit of time. This is a 2019 MacBook Pro. Uh, it's going to depend on the computer you have. So now everything is done and aligned there. As you can see, there's just a slight cropping on the edge there. That's because one of them may have been slightly off. So we're going to go ahead and select all of those layers by choosing the top one, going all the way down the bottom and pressing shift click on the bottom one now we're going to go up to layers smart objects and convert it to a smart object so now photoshop has stacked all of those layers we had into one smart object we're going to go back up to layers back to smart objects down to stack mode and then we're going to choose median filter now once we've chosen this median filter it's pretty much done and there you have it guys, all done. Uh, Photoshop has applied the median filter, the water is blurred and everything else that was in focus along that plane of focus there is still sharp. So that's how it works. As I said before, uh, the more photos you take, it's the same as having a dark ND. So if I was to take 100 photos of the same scene, the water would be much smoother than it is in this one as well. But you get the idea, uh, usually around 30 to 60 photos is going to get you what you need to do. So there's our before photos, well one of them anyway, one of the 30 images. And then this is our final edited cropped image. I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of sharpening to that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, something a little bit different for you. I'm sure there's videos on YouTube about this subject already, but it can be something new you can try out in your local neighborhood, maybe if you're in lockdown or you want to just go and you don't have any ND filters. So thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next video.